Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrard Show. I'm your host, Sherrard. I hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday. This is Hump Day, and I'm so excited for tonight's episode of the show. We have a beautiful young lady on the show who is, uh, she actually won The Voice. She is a singer. She is an actress. She's been on many um, television shows. She's also now the voice um, of a cartoon on Netflix she's going to be talking about, and we're so excited to have her on, on tonight's special episode entitled Maximizing My Talents for the World to See, Mrs. the lovely Mrs. Kim uh, Yarborough on the Sherrard Show. But before we get to her, the Sherrard Show is brought to you by iHeartRadio. You can always listen to some of the greatest episodes of your life on the Sherrard Show on iHeartRadio. If you miss it on Essence Television, you can just go right to iHeartRadio and hear the episodes from Smokey Robinson, Stevie Wonder, Manhattans, that beautiful lady named Kim Yarball, and many, many more right on iHeartRadio. And then also on Essence Television, ladies and gentlemen, you can see these uh, wonderful episodes just add it to your roku device your um, amazon fire stick or you can always just see it right there on online now when it comes to beautiful voices you will never hear a better one ladies and gentlemen this woman can sing she's actually won competition singing adele's classic rolling in the deep she's also um, can sing just as good as the version of jennifer hudson's um spotlight and she's on the sherrard show tonight um the wonderful very talented Mrs. Kim Yarbrough. Welcome to the Sherrard Show. How are you, young lady? I'm beautiful. Thank you for those lovely compliments, Sherrard. <laughs> well, I'm not only a fan, but I'm also honored to have you on. It's so exciting uh, seeing your work and then having you stop by on the Sherrard Show. Tell us a little bit about how you've been able to stay encouraged and inspired for all the years you've been in the industry. Oh, gosh. It's for one, it's the faith. You, you got to stay strong in your faith. Um, too, I, you know, I, I've always been driven. I've always been driven. Um, you, see, if you look at pictures of me as as a baby, if I'm in a birthday picture with some of the other kids, other kids are sitting there, just quiet and taking the picture, and I am busy. I'm trying to cut the cake or trying to tie somebody's shoe, or I am busy. <laughs> <laughs> now you started you started um actually acting and singing at eight years old is that correct i did i now, started acting at eight now i'm sure your mom looked at you and was like that girl gonna be an actress she probably saw that at one at two years old but it became official at eight um what does people say about you uh what was always the things that they stuck out about you being a youngster and your talent was it the voice was it the charisma what was it about you you know what? People always called me a diva from way back, even perfect strangers. I never understood it. And I <clears throat> I used to get offended by it because, you know, the, the original connotation of that word is not a good one. And I, I used to get offended by it. And then finally, I just started accepting it as a compliment. When I was in my teens, um, I was I was Miss Black Teenage Memphis when I was a teen. And people would look at me and go, yeah, I see why you got that, why you won that contest, because you got this air, you got this thing. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> okay, whatever. I'm just, I'm just Kim, you know? Have you ever figured out what they were saying? Uh, what, what's that air about you that makes people say, well, there's something about her so different? Have you ever put your, been able to put your finger on it? Lately, yes. In the last several years, yes. It's the confidence. It's just the confidence. You know, ladies and gentlemen, she don't know, I know this, but she's a Leo. So those Leos got that confidence out the <laughs> bag, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, just out the bag. They born with it. They born with it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we, ladies and gentlemen, we will be taking your questions um, later on in the show. But first, I got a, I got a lot of stuff to dig in with uh, on Kim tonight. She's um, She actually won The Voice. It was very interesting because it was a big, big show. And you know what? I'll let you tell us about how did you win The well, Voice. Well, I, I actually... <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I actually didn't win. I was a finalist. I was a finalist. I was uh, in the top 18. Hang on one second. Mm -hmm. I ended up in the top 18. Um, there were only three weeks left in the show before uh, w when I got eliminated from the show. So I didn't feel too bad about my position in the show. I was a finalist and I can always say I was a finalist on The Voice and nobody can take that from me. And um, yeah, it was just, it was a fluke on how it all happened. 
But, but how did um, it all happen that you got on The Voice? Because you already were pretty big in the industry. What made you try out for The Voice? Yeah, I was doing film and television. And um, some years previous to my audition for The Voice, I had tried out, I, I was going around the audition circuit, auditioning for all the reality shows for American Idol, for um, Star Search. There was Arsenio's version of Star Search. Remember that? I do. Um, try to at at one point even get on the apprentice you that was really that was a time what's that you were really feeling good huh yeah that was that was a time in my life when i was just grabbing at straws and i was like okay somebody somebody is gonna listen to me so uh by the time the, the audition for the voice came around i didn't want to do it I had auditioned for Sunday's Best. I mean, you name it. I had been through the audition and it was like, sing one note, next. Oh next. my goodness. Now, 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 Kim, what is the requirements? Is the requirements different for The Voice than it is the American Idol? Because I know American Idol, they usually don't want anybody um, um, over 30 in American Idol. Is that the same way with The Voice? No, no. Um, during my season, <clears throat> the oldest, God rest his soul, Preston Shannon, uh, the famous blues singer from Memphis. He was the oldest contestant on my season. He was 66 years old. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. So now you said you didn't want to do it. So how were you able to get it in you to want to do it? <clears throat> I was asked to do it. I probably wouldn't have. Um, there, there was a little cabaret show that I used to do. It was like an open mic for professional singers um, over in the Hollywood area that I used to go to every month. And that show contacted all the people that used to perform on that little cabaret show and said, hey, we've been contacted by this new show called The Voice. They've already had their first season and they're auditioning for the second season. And they're opening it up to the singers that appear on our stage. If you would like to have an audition, we can set it up. Well, this was the kind of cabaret show where it was very intimate. It was very nice. You had your own piano player. You just gave him your music, told him what you wanted to sing. You never knew who was going to show up. Michael Feinstein, Bonnie Raitt might be sitting on the front row. Jeff Goldblum, you just never knew. And it was a fun thing for us to do. We didn't get paid to do it, but you know, it was good to see everybody. And so that show from that little cabaret show was how I got connected with The Voice. Now, what and song I got did you my sing? first audition. What song what was did you sing on your audition? The first, the first song I sang was Spotlight. And then they asked me to do another song, which was Tell Me Something Good. Now, don't you don't think you're getting off the hook. You're definitely going to be singing that tonight. We're definitely going to hear this beautiful voice tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, you just got to sit tight bit. because, again, we got to dig in with Kim. Um, she's looking lovely. She's fantastic in what she does. Now, Kim, tell me a little bit about how the industry has treated you. We see what your resume looks like. It's very impressive. But has it been a struggle getting to where you are? I... I don't know that I like to look at it as a struggle. Yes, I've had some ups and downs. I've had some hard times, just like an attorney would have in their career, just like somebody working for Starbucks would have in their career, just like a waiter or a bartender would have in their career. Yes, I've, I've had my ups and downs. I've had, I've had my life ups and downs as well as career ups and downs. But, you know, I, I have been very fortunate and very blessed that, I have been able to take advantage of some magnificent opportunities in film and television. And I can say I cracked the code on something that millions of people try to do every day and don't succeed at, which is become a working actor. That's so a heck of I, a code. That's yeah, that is that is not crack. lost on me at all. <laughs> but you know, the thing that's interesting, Kim, is that so many um, actors, they don't really have a plan. They just want to get a, a, an audition, get a gig, but they don't plan after the gig. And a lot of times they get a lot of money at one time. They think it's going to always be that way. They spend it out and then it's gone and you become homeless, et cetera. Shed mm -hmm. some light on that. I was listening to um, Alicia Keys talk about... <clears throat> 
how she knew eyes wide open when she first started in her career, when her first CD came out, songs in the key of A minor, I think, about how when she started to get her first big checks, she had heard all the horror stories that had happened to people in this business. You think it's gonna last forever and you get your 15 minutes and it's gone. She would not even spend her first check. A friend of hers had to tell her, girl, just buy buy yourself a pair of shoes or, so, or something. Let's, let's go to Bergdorf Goodman and get you some stuff. And she got to the register and had $3,000 worth of stuff and she put it all back. I don't blame her. I don't blame her. <laughs> so you just, yeah, I try to be very wise um, with the money that I get. Um, I may get more money than the average person for working for a day, but the average person working a nine to five job is going to go to that job every day. I may not go to my job for another three months. So you have to make sure that you put money away. You spend your money wisely. And when you start coming into the big money, it's probably best that you get some kind of financial advisor to tell you somebody that you trust, somebody that you trust as a referral, don't just get anybody off the street because they will take your money. And like Oprah, sign all your own checks. Correct, correct. <laughs> so, so, so you don't think Kim is wise if you get 300, if you get a $3 million to spend 299,000 of it on a Ferrari? <laughs> no. If you become a millionaire suddenly and you spend one dollar, you are no longer a millionaire. Correct. Correct. Got that from Steve Harvey. That is absolutely correct. Now, Kim, um, for you, you've seen a lot of people come and go in this industry. But what is it that you've done to be able to have such staying power? I think I know how to reinvent myself. I have been blessed. God has given me. Um, a few talents. He's given me a few talents. And if one of those things is not popping, I mean, I guess what I'm trying to say is you can't just be a comedian in this business, or you can't just be a singer, or you can't just be a songwriter. You have to have slashes behind your name and hyphen hyphenates. You have to be able to do several different things so that when one thing is not popping, and it it will you will have a dry spell you will have those something else is you know all of the time my, my singing career is not popping sometimes the acting career is popping sometimes the the modeling era area of my career is popping i'm a violinist sometimes i get a lot of lot of string gigs so it just depends on how many talents you can cultivate to where you're good enough at some of them that you can consider yourself a professional and charge for them. We're not talking about hobbies. We're talking about things that you've actually invested education in and have studied and honed the craft. Very good. Well, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I know people are thinking I'm with the wonderful Shaka Khan, but no, I'm tonight I'm with the wonderful Kim Yarbaugh. She's giving you some education on the industry. I hope you all are taking notes. Um, again, we are on Essence Television as well as we're on Facebook Live. We're going to be taking your questions um, as well as this young lady is sharing some of her wisdom and insight. Again, the show is um, sure our show is brought to you by iHeartRadio. Make sure you click the link on your monitor as well as to subscribe. Now, Kim, um, when it comes to television, you being on Dexter, being on Two Broke Girls and so many others. Uh, tell us a little bit about your experience on being on mainstream television. Wow. I remember my very first speaking role on television. And my, my dad used to laugh at me because <laughs> he, he would say, remember when you said you were going to go out to Hollywood? and you were gonna get rich and you're gonna buy us a house. Well, and this is the sad part of the story. My very first role, my very first speaking role on television was on Bones. And it was November 20th, 2009. And I remember it because my father passed away the next day. Oh, wow. He was in ICU 
the night that I was on, and I'm sure the television was on, but he was too sick to see it. Oh, wow. Oh. So that was my, that was my very first role on for speaking role on television. And when I did the voice, every casting director in town knew who I was because my agent had been promoting me the whole time. Watch my client on the voice. He would send out emails every week, watch my client on the voice. Mm -hmm. So that by the time I got off my acting career, excuse me, my acting career went like that. Now, when it took off like that, did you feel like it always was going to be that way or you didn't fall for the hype? No, I didn't fall for the hype. I know every moment can be your last. You're only as good as the show you did yesterday or last month or, you know, not even a year ago. <laughs> That's correct. Well, now, Kim, do you consider yourself more? Some people have different opinions on themselves. Do you consider yourself a singer first and an actress second or vice versa? You know, it's very difficult <clears throat> to choose as I as I get more and more deep into the television and film business, it's, it's hard to choose. I mean, I, I came here 20 years ago because I wanted to be the black Lucille Ball. And I also wanted to sing. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do as a singer other than um, have a recording contract and tour, but um, it's, it's hard, it's hard to choose. I will say this, acting is my passion, but singing is my soul. Mm. I'm sure people are gonna be asking questions about that comment. They're gonna want <laughs> you to elaborate about that. That's pretty deep. You need to slow down on that one. Now, now, um, when you received your first record recording deal, was it one of those deals that was more beneficiary, beneficiary for the record industry? Or was that one that was like, they had to sign you because you were hot, so they made it a win-win for you both? I actually have have had only independent deals and it was a mutual win-win for both parties. I have I have yet to have the opportunity to have a major recording deal with a major recording company. But yeah, I've had I've had little deals here and there and I I was always happy with with what we did. You know, what's pretty cool that um, we were talking off camera, ladies and gentlemen, she's going to be the voice. She's the voice of the Netflix uh, cartoon called Cosmic Kid. Is that correct? Kid Cosmic. Kid Cosmic. Tell us a little bit about lending your voice to a cartoon. Now, we all grew up watching Saturday morning cartoons, as well as the Flintstones, Pink Panther, things like that. Now, seeing yourself doing such things, how do you feel about it? What does it feel? Oh, my gosh. I had recorded for six months in the recording studio before I even knew what my character was going to look like. And so the day I walked into the recording studio and they finally had a prototype of my character up on the screen, I went, oh, my voice is coming out of that little thing. So that was my reaction to the whole thing. I felt like a kid all over again watching, you know, Peanuts or... The, the same guy that created the Powerpuff Girls is the same guy that created Kid Cosmic. Really? So tell us a little bit about Kid Cosmic. What's the what's the, the premise about it? Is it like the Powerpuff Girls where they were saving the world and they were just little miniature dolls? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> these kids are defending the earth from aliens. And they take it upon themselves. They, they come across these stones that have magical powers, but the stones each have each individual powers and you have to have at least a few of them in order to be able to do anything. And what they're trying to do is get all 13 stones. And so uh, there's Kid Cosmic and then there's my daughter in the show. Her name is Joe. She's 14 and she's one of the kids that is out in the galaxy fighting these aliens to keep the earth safe. And then there are four more of the superheroes that are, and I play the mom. I'm the mom of Joe, one of the kid superheroes. That is pretty cool. Um, and now that's on, that's coming soon to Netflix or is it out? No, now? it's been on since February 2nd. They're streaming uh, the first season right now. You can binge watch it. I'm not sure when the second season is coming out, but it will be coming. 
That's pretty cool. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break and when we come back. I want to ask uh, Kim some tough musical questions to see what her musical aptitude is all about. And then we'll be taking your questions as well. I'm Sherrod on our Wednesday night conversation with the lovely Kim Yarbrough. We'll be right back right after this. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Sherrard Show. I'm your host, Sherrard. Hope you're enjoying it as much as I am with the wonderful conversation with uh, Mrs. Kim Yarbrough about her career, uh, the music industry, as well as giving you some helpful insights about how to further your career, as well as to add some longevity to you. We'll be taking your questions momentarily as well. So Kim, now when it comes to voice and cartoons, is it easier or harder than doing film? I think it's a little bit easier in some areas to a certain degree, <clears throat> simply because in voiceover, it doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what you have on that day, as long as you're comfortable. Um, the thing that I find more difficult is that you don't, it, it's kind of a double-edged sword. The same thing that makes it great is the same thing that makes it hard. Since they can't see you, you have to be able to breathe life into that character with only your voice. And yeah, you can do facial expressions and body movements and things like that while you're recording in the studio. That helps. But you don't have the benefit of a camera helping mm -hmm. you get your point across. So so um, it's, with your cartoon character, do you have to sound goofy or do you have to sound like, you know, cartoonish? Not for my character. I use my regular voice for my character, mm -hmm. except she screams a lot. They're, they're, <laughs> especially when the aliens are attacking. Mm -hmm. She gets kind of scared for her daughter, as any mother would, you know. But um, yeah, she, she screams a lot and she gets she gets kind of panicky. That's usually not me. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. But overall, it's a fun. It's a very fun experience. Oh, my gosh. The, the most fun ever. Wow. That's great. You know, it's it's something that's really trending is being able to do um, cartoon voiceovers as well as video game voiceovers. That's huge. Um, yeah. I had a guest on the show um, last week. She actually did a um, survival horror game for the PlayStation 4 called Return. You'll see it on your monitor right there. Um, and she thought it was very fun being able to uh, do that. So um, I said, cool, you know, because that's something that pays very well and is very fun to do. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we take your questions, we're going to test um, Kim in terms of her music aptitude because she is a songstress and we will be hearing her voice as well. Now, Kim, what era of music do you enjoy the most listening? And a lot of people say, oh, I love all music, but which one era do you enjoy the most? Which era? Probably the um, 80s era. The 80s era, it, I love R&B. I love R&B, but the R&B and the pop music of the 80s, Cool and the Gang, Michael Jackson, uh, even some of, some of the European groups, uh, Toto and um, Duran Duran. I Ambrosia. Loved, yeah, I, I loved all of those groups, all of, well, those, all of those artists. That's very good. Huh? And it was some great music. And you know, back in the 80s, um, it was all about the music video. The 80s was oh, yeah. huge about music video. I mean, that really sold it because it had me thinking I could dance like Michael Jackson. Um, let me get down on that. Now, um, question number one. Let me give you three questions. Question number one. This may seem easy and audience, don't you dare help. Who sings this song, Diamond in the Back? Diamond oh. in the Back? Front. Now think about this because 99% of people get it wrong. But who sings that? You know what? I do not know who sings it, but I do know it is not Curtis Mayfield. Oh, whoa, she's on it. She's on it, ladies and gentlemen. It is no, not if, if I said, if I said, um, you, you guess it right, you get a million dollars. Most people get it wrong. They think it was Curtis Mayfield, but no, it wasn't. It was William DeVoe. Yeah. William DeVoe sang that song and most people think it was. 
Very good. Very good. Okay. See, that was a safe answer. I'm very a safe answer. <laughs> very good. Okay. Question number two. Easier one for you. Who sings the song, Bring It On Home to Me? Bring if you ever change your mind. Who sings that? About leaving, leaving me behind. There we go. I'm wanting to say that's Percy Sledge. And no. Sam Cook. Sam Cook. How you know what? <laughs> I just finished watching a documentary on him and just finished watching uh One Night in Vegas. What what's the name? One of the one night in Miami. One night in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> I just finished watching that. I can't believe I got that wrong. Okay, okay we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make it up. Uh, you're gonna make it up. This last question. You're gonna okay. make it up here. Um, who sang the song "The Love I Lost"? The love I lost. Who sang that? Tavares. Tavares. Is that your final answer? No, it's not. Tavares. <laughs> no, no. Um, he's the same. It's the same group that sang "Love TKO." Yeah, I was gonna say um um Teddy Pendergrass and Boom! There we go. Very good. Harold <laughs> yeah. Melvin and the Blue Moon. Teddy Melvin Pendergrass and the Blue Moon. Yes. There we go. Very good. Okay. Very good. You see, she knows her stuff in the music, ladies and gentlemen. This and, is fun. Uh, and I, I I love throwing things at you. Okay, now I'm gonna give you a bonus question. Now okay. this is the bonus question. Um who sang two artists sang is sang this song? Um, and tell me which one it was. Um, say a little prayer for you. You mean say a little prayer for yes. you? Yes. Name the two artists that sang this. Ever. Stay in my heart and I will win. Dionne Warwick and Aretha. Boom. Now, which one sang it first? Who was the one that uh, sang it first? Um... I think it, I think it might have been Dion. I think Dion. Oh, you on it? Dion Roark was the first one to sing it, and then Aretha okay. Franklin came by. And audience, tell me which one do you like the best? Um, we, I personally, I like Dion Warwick's better, but Aretha Franklin has more soul to it. But that's just my personal opinion. But I would like to hear from you. And now the audience is ready to ask you questions, Kim. They want to put okay. you on the hot seat. This first question is from Ryan. This is from Ryan. He's all the way in Alabama. He says, you have a terrific voice. He remembers seeing you on The Voice. And he said, keep up the wonderful things you're doing. His question is, when will you be cutting an album and where can we purchase it if you already have one out? You know, um, I have uh, one of my albums on my website, my last one. Um, I have an EP and I have an album on my website. You can go to kimyarbro.com and click on the music store tab and uh, it will take you to, you can hear samples of each one. You can buy the whole EP or the, or the whole album or you can buy and uh, download individual songs. My last album I released about two years ago, I think maybe three, it's called Champagne and Grits. And I am working on a gospel album right now. I'm working on some gospel songs, but I'm also working on some jazz songs. I'm not sure which it's going to be yet, but it's gonna be one of those two genres. And I'm working on it right now. It's going to be out before the year's out? No, no, probably next year. Okay, very good, very good. We appreciate you, Ryan. This is from Diane. She is from Liberty, Mississippi. She says, you look so beautiful and you have a wonderful voice and Thank you're you. a classy, epitome of what a classy Black woman should be. Her question is, you've accomplished so much in your career. What's next for Mrs. Kim Yarbrough? Very good question, Diane. You know, there is, as soon as COVID is over, <laughs> I don't know if it'll ever be over, but let me say when things open up and we can get back to going to the theater again, I would really love to put my show up again. I did a, I wrote a one woman show. It's called Miss Peaches. And it's about the life story of Miss Etta James. And I actually play Etta in the show. And I put it up about three times before COVID hit. I did it twice in LA and once in Palm Springs. I would love to be able to put that show up again. 
Very good. Now, now, can it be seen anywhere? Is it on YouTube? Anywhere it can be seen? No, it's not. We did, we have not recorded it yet because we were just in the process of workshopping it when I was putting it up at these various places. So, no, not yet. Not yet. Very good. Okay, very good. Last question. Um, this question is from Mildred. She is from Madison, Wisconsin. Her question is, you've been given great advice on being in the music industry as well as being an actress. Her question is, when should someone in their career jump to move to LA and when should they jump to move to New York? Well, as you said before, Sherard, you have to have a plan. You have to have a plan. Um, I moved here, well, I'm originally from Memphis. <clears throat> I moved to Los Angeles from Minneapolis. I spent seven years in Minneapolis before I moved here. And my plan was to go to New York and do Broadway. That was where I thought I was headed next. Um, but all of the doors that seemed to open on the East Coast at that time started to begin to close and doors started to open on the West Coast. So I, I ended up changing my plan and, and moving out here. So you, you have to have a plan. Um, make sure that, you know, no plan is gonna be airtight but make sure that you know where you're going to be getting money from make sure that um you got some contacts and you've been doing your networking in the city where you want to move to make sure you know where you're going to live and where it's going to be affordable make sure you have a support system of maybe friends and family maybe not in the city but at least in the area that you can call on if you get into trouble Make your plan and start networking. I, I, I can't say that you know, you're gonna know when to do it in two years or five years. I felt like in the Twin Cities, I had performed on every stage imaginable in Minneapolis and St. Paul. And I knew it was my time to leave to either go East or West because I had outgrown the city. I had become a big fish in a small pond and I didn't want that. So just make sure you got all of those five or six things in place before you make the leap. Very good. Very good. We appreciate you all's questions um, for the lovely Kim Yarbrough. She can take more, but we are close to being out of time tonight. Um, and I appreciate her taking her moment of time to be on the Sherrod show. She is so exciting and has a beautiful voice. And speaking of beautiful voices, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to hear it right now. Um, so what are we going to be, what are you going to be singing for us, Kim? I have a preference. Um, I absolutely love you know, both songs. I love Rolling in the Deep and I love um, Spotlight. So tell us what we're going to be hearing. Oh, I, and I, I really didn't, I really didn't plan any music or anything. So if you don't mind, I can do it acapella. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, just a, a little snippet of it. Um, maybe, um, maybe a little bit of Rolling in the Deep. There's a fire starting in my heart. Reaching a fever pitch and it's bringing me out the dark. Finally, I can see you crystal clear. Go ahead and sell me out and I lay your ship bare. The scars of your love remind me of us. They keep me thinking that we almost had it all. The scars of your love, they leave me breathless. I can't help feeling we could have had it all. Oh, mercy, mercy. Wherever you plan next, I'm showing up there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Kim, we thank you so much for taking a moment to be on the Sherrod Show. Thank you're you wonderful. Sure. You're beautiful. Now, are you going to be coming back to see us soon? Absolutely. Whenever you need me to come back, I appreciate you having me on. Now, where can our fans follow you, those who are watching and those who will be watching um, after the broadcast? Where can they follow you on Facebook, Instagram? Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. If you go onto my website at uh, www.kimyarbro.com, all of my social media are on the very first homepage and you can click one of those little icons and it'll take you directly to any of my social media. 
Look at your monitor right there, ladies and gentlemen. She's going to be, uh, you know, definitely in the city near you once the COVID is over. You can always drop a hello. We appreciate you being on the Sherrard Show because I absolutely appreciate it as well. Thank on you. our next episode of the Sherrard Show, we are going to have the wonderful Cheryl Cooley is going to be stopping by the Sherrard Show talking about her illustrious career as well as being an artist and an actress as well. I'm Sherrard. In the meantime, subscribe to our newsletter. It's right on your monitor. And I will see you next week on the Sherrard Show. In the meantime, enjoy your evening. Bye-bye now. Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Sherrod Show. If you like additional information about our episodes, you can log on to thesherrodshow.com. You can also check us out on social media, like us on Facebook, look at our YouTube video, subscribe to our newsletter at Essence Television Networks at gmail.com. If you would like to get information to the host, Sherrod, you can email him at thesherrodshow.com. Once again, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week.